A3 e-tron Audi presents its first plug-in hybrid. We now want to check how the car behaves and how far we can get with the electric vehicle. After we've checked the status of the battery, we start our drive through Vienna. The fact that Audi have produced a hybrid rather than a purely electric vehicle is no accident. Audi's priority is to produce vehicles that are sporty, highly efficient and most of all great to drive. All of these things have to work in a car that's practical for everyday use. The A3 e-tron hybrid is the logical result. With a drive system that can produce 204 brake horsepower, where a 1.4 litre TFSI petrol engine and a 102 kilowatt electric motor share the workload and distribute the power through a six-speed S-tronic gearbox, this is not only a quick and sporty machine, but also a very economical one. With our batteries full to the brim, driving under 80 miles per hour and using steady acceleration, we don't need to use any petrol at all. The car will coast along happily using only the electric motor for over 30 miles. I think one big advantage of the A3 e-tron is, is that we have a very powerful e electric motor with 75 kilowatts. So this means that the customer can really uh, do their daily driving uh, in fully electrically. And that's one, uh, one advantage, I think. Uh, also, we have 110 kilowatts of uh, petrol engine, and the combination is 150 kilowatts. So it gives uh, the customer also very good performance, but at the same time, uh, very low fuel consumption. The interior greets us in the style and comfort we've come to expect from an A3, and is fitted with generous standard equipment. The cabin space and storage doesn't seem to have been affected in any way by the hybrid technology. Ample room is provided for both passengers and their luggage. The technology that has been developed for the e-tron will delight bargain hunters. The charge and condition of the battery can be checked remotely via a smartphone app, making managing your battery use easy and allowing you to make the greatest possible savings by getting the most out of the effortless electric mode. The battery has a capacity of 8.8 kilowatt hours. Now that we've finished our sightseeing through Vienna, we have to refuel our car. But the thing is, we only need some electricity because we didn't need any fuel at all. For a typical commute of around 18 miles, as you can top up the vehicle's battery in just two hours at a charge station or under four hours from a regular power socket, you won't need to see much of petrol stations. The official fuel usage figure for the e-tron is 62 miles for one and a half litres of petrol. When we talk about plug-in hybrid, we have to talk about fuel consumption. In our case, we started with a fully loaded battery. We drove a while, but the car took less than three litres and 100 km. The car got more than 200 brake horsepower, so I think that's more than fine. The best use of the hybrid technology is a high proportion of city or country driving. Here, the compact five-door e-tron will spend its time gliding on a hybrid wave. Without sharp acceleration and aggressive driving, this remains an effective and economical way to travel. But when you do put your foot down, you'll find that the e-tron has no shortage of power readily available to you for those times when fuel efficiency is not quite as important as raw power. Audi are huge supporters of this type of hybrid technology, so we can expect to see it spreading through Audi's middle and upper class models. If hybrid cars can be produced that are unobtrusive, comfortable and powerful as we experienced with the Audi A3 e-tron, then we can expect to see a lot more of them. This November, Audi brings the highly practical A3 e-tron to the market at a starting price of 37,900 euros.